What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Things That Keep Me Up At Night. You can see there's two of us here. It's myself, Jory Goodman, and a good friend of mine and a moderator over at the Time Teller channel, my buddy John. You might recognize him from his handle, that fellow there. Uh, over on the time teller chats and comment section. But guys, I have him here, not only because he's incredibly knowledgeable, not only because he's a very good person and, and a friend of mine and someone that I trust, but it's because he uh, has actually personally helped me with a situation that I recently went through uh, in a time of uh, kind of personal turmoil and, and almost, you know, crisis all around me. He was someone that I reached out to. And I want to definitely share him and his wisdom with you. And before we talk about anything specific, uh, I'd like him to kind of introduce himself and give his background a bit. Sure. Um, so aside from being a moderator, um, I'm in the chaplain corps, I'm in the military and I take care of people and I say, yo, what's up? And I visit with people and help them through their crises that they find themselves in and help them process different uh, events that happen within their lives and help them get to a more healthy state from which they came. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I do. Yeah. And he is someone, as I said, that I personally know and trust. And the reason that kind of, or I should say the catalyst that brought us here to this episode, you guys have, have already read the title, we're talking about faith. And when I reached out to him in my personal time of crisis, one thing that I was kind of coming to terms with or reconciling with or trying to discover, I, I wanted something to reinforce uh, the, the feeling of, of staying positive. Or I wanted a reason or, or, or some backup or some, again, reinforcement, something that would help me keep going. And uh, something that kept coming to mind was faith. Have faith. Hey, you got to keep faith. You got to have faith. And I was like, well, like, what does this mean? What does it even mean? Is, is it a real thing? Is it just something people say? What is the benefit of having faith? What is its necessity in our lives? And how do people keep faith? Yeah, that's a, those are some great points. Um, I think I initially want to say that you don't have to be religious to have faith um, or to be faithful towards something or someone. And we can get into that. I, I think when you and I were talking, it was really, okay, where are you? And then where do you want to be and where do you see yourself and how do you get to where you want to be and what can you control versus what you can't. And, and really having faith uh, helps sustain, like you said, sustain you, but give you purpose and meaning. And I, I think that's, that's a good place to start is if we look at faith, not, I like, I like when people say I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Right. Right. What does that mean? And that means that they believe in something there whether they're agnostic, atheist, or, or maybe they could even be atheist and not believe in a certain deity or multiple deities or a first cause of some sort, but they can believe that, okay, there's something outside myself, something transcendent. And I think to have faith is to connect to that transcendent thing. It's a lifting of the intellect more than it is a focus so much on maybe a, a deistic end. Mm -hmm. It can be, for those who are who are, uh, subscribe to a specific faith group or religion, but uh, I think defining our terms there is is a very good place to start. And, and faith, uh, I would consider uh, more of the Aristotelian concept of lifting up of the intellect towards the transcendent. Mm -hmm. So seeking for that which gives you purpose and meaning. Right, and that could be a set of morals. Uh, you know, that could be an ethical thing. That could be. Um, that could be a deity. That could be God. It could be an, an ideal, uh, um, I guess, sense of self, what you want to become. Like, an, like you idolize a, a, an athlete or a movie right. star. You know, you see attributes that you want to attain towards. So you could have faith in the lifting up of the, the intellect toward those 
ideals. So, and, and I consider faith as a virtue. Um, right. You could see, you could see a little picture above over here and the <laughs> last supper. And so I, I, I'm Christian. I have a, um, I'm a Roman Catholic. You know, I consider faith to be a theological virtue, theological right. being. It has an end, a beginning and an end. It is an infused virtue, one that you're gifted with by God, by virtue of creation and by virtue of that relationship or by effect of that relationship. And then as a virtue, we can talk about it as a perfected habit. So you can habitually become faithful. So you touched upon religion. As you said, you're Roman Catholic, you're a chaplain, you're in the chaplain corps, I should say, in the military. Um, I'm sure a lot of what you talk about is based upon various religious um, themes. Probably not all of what you talk about, but I'm sure that that's a part of it. Mm-hmm. I am a practicing Jew. Uh, I'm definitely, you know, not Orthodox. I'm not anywhere near the Orthodoxy, but I do consider myself religious. And I know when you and I were talking about having faith and staying positive, a lot of it was almost giving, or, or here's what I'll say. When I reached this kind of comfortable spot where I actually felt relief and comfort was when you helped me realize, and I eventually just realized and accepted that faith is believing, is my belief in God and the understanding that whatever the outcome is will be the best outcome uh, because it was decided. Um, And God has his best interest or, or my best interest in mind. Um, that kind of did give me comfort for sure. Um, if it were, you know, my way, I would have certain things happen, but if it didn't happen the way that I wanted it, I could still find comfort in the fact that, uh, what, what came to fruition was best for me. Right. I hope that made sense. What would we say to someone? And this is kind of potentially a loaded question. This is potentially controversial. What would we say to someone who hears that, that I gave myself up to God, that I just let it up to God? I still did what I had to do. I still had things in front of me that that I was working towards, but I gave the outcome up to God. What do you say to someone that hears that and is like, well, that's, you, you've just removed all accountability from yourself. You, like you're just give you're just destroying any form of accountability and you're just letting it go to this entity that may or may not exist. Cause I've heard that. Yeah, that that's a fair question. And I think it's a good point that you've made. Um, part of, part of what you just said was you accepted your state in life and were dutifully bound to the, that which you can effect essentially. Mm -hmm. So what you were responsible towards, you still took care of. So there's no relinquishing of your responsibility there. You are still taking on the burden of your duty as so much your state in life permits Mm -hmm. or subscribe describes. So we are still bound and still have responsibility, but when we give, and it does sound like, okay, well, I'm letting something else take the brunt or the determination of my future. Right. Part of that is an acceptance of you can only control so much. You can't control things outside of yourself. So when you, when you say you're relinquishing, you're giving yourself up to God, you're more opening yourself up to whatever, you know, whatever end happens and you're open to adjusting toward that end. And yours is through the discipline of your religion. And right. I want to talk about that. It's, religion is the discipline. It's, the, it's not necessarily, uh, uh, you don't have to look at it in a cultish uh, manner, but more as a, like an organized, uh, organized body. Uh, but you can look at it as the way by which you practice your beliefs. People work out religiously. They exercise religiously. What does that mean? They, they perfect a virtue of habit. It's discipline. However, it, it is a discipline. It is the way by which you carry out your belief. Mm-hmm. So when we rely on 
religion and we give ourselves up to the awareness that we cannot control everything around us, we're relinquishing that expectation that we hold the place of God or we hold the place of the determining factor. And mm-hmm. we acknowledge that we can only do so much and we are responsible to what we can control. So there's a little bit of a psychological thing happening there of acceptance. Mm-hmm. And we see this in grief counseling, right? So there, there's a per- certain point where you're angry, you're frustrated. Why didn't I do this? Or you, you displace blame. Right. And you're trying to control an outcome or look for a way to, uh, by which that outcome, that outcome could have been different. It could have been changed or it could not have happened a certain way. Mm-hmm. Well, that's part of processing grief. And with that, when we're relinquishing our control, we're grieving the loss of that control. Right. However, we're choosing to accept it. So and you're not from your anger. It's the antithesis of denying it as well. Right. You, you pass exactly. the denial stage. You're able yeah. to confront it and you're able to eventually accept it, which is what you helped me do personally. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah and, and one of the, yeah. So religion, the, wit, the, the method by which you practice your belief, the, the discipline of your beliefs exemplified or, or practiced. And then faith, that which you hold toward the end, the transcendent, the the lifting up of your intellect towards an end. Mm -hmm. And then spirituality, that can be akin to faith. It it might not have a specific end, but it's not as as set as religion, the act by which you go and practice that. Your spirituality, we're all spiritual. Right. Even people that that don't. Even people who don't subscribe to a religion. And I'll say it in, in the fact because we're, we all have a sense of imagination yeah. and we all have a sense of intellect. And some of that could be material. Some of it is also immaterial. It is our expression by which we, we, we connect to another that is spiritual. So you're touching upon a bunch of things, right? Confronting and accepting the things in front of you, understanding that you have limited control in many situations and focusing on the things that you can control. You touched upon taking personal inventory. Where are you? What is going on? Where would you like to be? What steps would you take to get there? These are all incredibly helpful things to practice and be cognizant of, even if you're not religious. And I really kind of want to hammer this point home because the truth is, I mean, just based upon numbers, right? The majority of my viewers will not be Jewish. Who knows how many viewers will be Roman Catholic? Who knows how many viewers will even have any form of, you know, organized religion that they subscribe to. So just to kind of distill it down to this one point, regardless of religion, do you believe keeping faith is beneficial? Do you think it is only beneficial in times of crisis? Do you think that there are almost exercises that someone can do to keep faith? And how would someone tap into that? I know that, I know that that's like a tall order right there, mm-hmm. yeah. but regardless of religion, mm-hmm. is it beneficial? When do we keep faith and how do we tap into it? It is beneficial how we tap into it and why we tap into it is important because it speaks to our growth and our identity. Even if you don't subscribe to a major faith tenant, um, it's important to acknowledge that you can't give what you don't have. It's just simple. And in order for us to grow in any fashion, we need to look to something outside of ourselves. You can't be your own objective truth. That's a philosophical um, understanding. So you can't be the, the matter by which you measure yourself. It has to be something outside of yourself that you're measured against or upon. Right. In order for you to acknowledge who you are in relationship to that or those around you. And then in order to grow in a way that you want to. Good, bad, and different. You're going to mm-hmm. grow. You know, it's not, I'm in my mid-30s. I don't grow up anymore. I grow out <laughs> yeah. but nonetheless you're, you're gonna you're gonna grow you're gonna change right. in life right we're gonna have experiences and if you experience a tragic or a crisis you're gonna get through that sometimes more 
with more growth than other times. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to be able to help somebody else through their crisis in that manner because you have experience through that process. Experience, perspective. Yeah. Right. So what I would say to those, especially those who do not subscribe to a major faith tenant, it is important that you that you choose to raise your intellect towards that which is transcendent. So that thing that is outside of yourselves, ask yourself, who am I in relation to those whom I'm around? Who am I in relationship to my family members? Who am I in relationship to my spouse, my friends? Who am I in relationship to my parents or my children? And how do I be better at those specific relationships? And then how do I measure that? What is that mm -hmm. thing that is external to me by which I can seek and I can have faith in or trust in or believe in and grow towards? So as, a, as an action, how can you exemplify this or how could you practice this? It would be the actual practice of, and, and I think you and I talked about it too, sitting down each day and writing out who am I in relationship to wherever, mm -hmm. in, in whatever regard. And then is this a positive? How do I make this more positive? And how do I heal or fix these areas? And then more importantly, how do I grow in them? And this isn't easy, guys. Okay. When I asked John right here to, to distill this into a few sentences, he kind of made a list for us right now. And, and part of that list was kind of us making a list, right, of our lives and our place within it. Um, but just, just because he said it so eloquently and so concisely doesn't mean it's going to be as simple for you to do. Because I know for a fact when I spoke to him and he gave me that homework to do, I didn't do it in an hour. I didn't even do it in a day. It took some thinking, right? And it took a little bit of kind of gritting my teeth to confront how complicit I may or may not be within the issues that, that I'm freaking out over, right? That takes a lot of guts. Even if you perceive someone else, like an external thing has done you wrong and that that has put you in crisis mode, um, part of the hardest kind of hurdle to, to overcome is realizing how complicit you may or may not have been. How have you contributed in this scenario? And the only way that you're going to figure out how to fix it is by understanding what you may have done to contribute to it. Uh, because those things that your actions are the things that you can control the external things, probably not so much, but if you can take inventory, take some time to take inventory and think about your actions when you're in crisis and when you're in good times, uh, then you can actually better manipulate yourself going forward. And so another thing that I want to bring up, John, is uh, I mentioned a lot of, you know, the down times, the heavy times, the deep times, the difficult times. How important is it, do you think, to be cognizant of faith when things are going good? Because let's face it, not like life isn't all bad. Life is mostly good. So, so it doesn't mean that we should just for, forget faith when, you know, I've been fed, everything's going good. My spouse is happy with me. My family's happy with me. I have a, a decent financial situation. Who cares about faith? What, what say you to that? Yeah. I th and that goes back to, to it being a virtue, something that needs to be practiced or honed. Right. Um, and, and I think you bring up a very good point. It is extremely important to practice that Thanksgiving and that, uh, that assessment of where am I and what do I believe or who do I believe in? And then what do I want to attain and taking stock of that regularly, but giving thanks for those good times. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of psychi uh, psychi uh, psychologists will explain that, you know, one bad event erases up to 25, 20 good memories, good events. Mm -hmm. And that's because this wonderful little silly thing in our brains called the amygdala that's responsible for the, the flight or fight mechanism mm -hmm. right the survival method based off of memories and learned behavior over time mostly our, our childhood so when one bad event happens we erase all of those or that overpowers 
based off of that need. It like survival. overwrites like on a hard drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, based off of that need for survival and we hone in and some, depending on if it's a clinical thing, it might be a trigger related, but just in general speaking, it, it could be one of those things that it happens, you're affected or you interpret that, your perspective triggers that, your amygdala says, hey, flight or fight and, or, or freeze. And all of a sudden now you're, you're in survival mode and you've erased 20 good things that you mm-hmm. have recollection over. So it's just that much more important, 20, 25 times more important to make those data points of positivity and connect to that thing that gives you meaning and purpose in life mm-hmm. willingly and over, over time. In, in your faith tradition, there's a, there's a great, beautiful practice of praying after your meals. Right. In my tradition, we always, we always pray before. You say eat. grace before you eat. Yeah. yeah. But in your tradition, there's a beautiful, a beautiful history of praying also after you eat. Because anybody who's hungry can give thanks for the food in front of them. Mm-hmm. It's after you've been satisfied that you need to, again, take stock of the gifts that, that you have at your disposal, whether it's by you or the grace of God, uh, by your immediate or passive action. And it's one of those things to where, hey, you know what? Let's count those good points. Let's count those good memories because those, if we're going to stay even keeled and, and it, looking in an optimistic uh, you know, mode, we're going to have to create those data points of positivity. Otherwise, we're going to be miserable all, all the time. Right. And, and you become less consistent again, because yeah. if this is a virtue, if this is a discipline, if this is something that we aim to refine, this is something that you have to like get your reps in with, right? Yeah. Regardless, yeah. like if you want to get strong, you got to go to the gym and do your squats. If it's raining out, you got to go. Even when you don't feel like going, you got to go. When you've eaten a lot, you got to go. When you haven't eaten really enough, you got to be consistent, right? Yeah. So you, yeah, there's, so. there's a, um, I think C.S. Lewis said it. Uh, if you want to be, uh, even if you don't believe, if you want to be religious, do what religious people do, mm-hmm. right? So even if you don't have something that is outside of yourself prompting that that um, practice, then give it a try. Take stock of your life once a day. Just make make 15 minutes. Say, am I where I want to be today? in life just for today. Right. And then how can I be better ordered towards whatever end, uh, whether, like I said earlier on, it could be a hero uh, of sports or movies Mm -hmm. or wherever an ideal that you want to attain towards. Then how can I better, how can I better order towards that? And then how could I attain that? And And these are, you know, willing to do the discipline to do that. This is, this all comes down to honestly, like to oversimplify this greatly goal setting right? Yeah. But oftentimes when people talk about goal setting, it's, it's kind of like, okay, I kind of have these vague ideas of what I want, or even maybe a specific idea of what I want. I want a Ferrari, you know what I mean? But it's like the actual act of figuring out where you are in relation to even beginning to attain that Ferrari, people don't really want to get into that because that's not the fun stuff. The fun stuff is thinking about all the things you want. You know what I mean? Ah, I want to date a supermodel. I want this, like blah, 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 blah. But where are you in relation to this? What's the type of work you'll have to do to get these things you want? The, I'm telling you, dude, goal setting. I'm not, I'm not just telling John here. I'm telling the viewer. Um, I journal every day. And it's not, you know, dear diary. Today I did. It's, it's not that type of journaling. But it is sometimes the feeling that like something that, that happened that day. Sometimes it is a dear diary moment, but, um, a lot of it, the whole big, like beginning part of my journaling session are a list or is a list of things I'm thankful for, uh, things I want to accomplish. And then what I can do today to get me closer to that. And I think because it doesn't sound fun, people don't want to do it. But again, to kind of use the word of the day, I have faith that this is going to help me. And I truly believe that it is helping me because as I've been doing it, I feel better about my progress in life. And so because I've gotten into the habit of journaling this way every day, I do it when I'm happy. I do it when I wake up 
on the wrong side of the bed. I do it when, um, you know, I'm kind of down in the dumps, uh, depressed, anxious. And I do it when I'm just having a normal day, you know, no, no, no influence either way. I just keep doing it and I have faith that it's going to benefit me. Yeah, the, the, there's a lot of very good points there and a lot of practical ones. Um, for those that that want to look at this in a more religious manner, um, whether it's deistic or non-deistic, it could be a sense of uh, disciplines uh, such as Buddhism. It could be, it could be a stoicism. Think of how you want to be ordered or what you want to be ordered toward. And then trust that you can attain that if you put in the work. Mm -hmm. So belief is, is that, is that trust, um, right. Or, or faith is that trust or that belief. So not only what do you put energy towards that you are claiming you believe, are you willing to climb the mountain to attain that that's on you? And that's what you can control. And mm -hmm. when you're going through a bad moment or a good moment, that calls a lot of humility to choose to relinquish control, mm -hmm. to acknowledge that you can only do so much and to really take the onus and actually perform and work on the things that you can do. So right. relinquishing control is not necessarily relinquishing uh, responsibility. It's not giving that away. It's allowing the openness for other things, a different expectation to come to fruition. Right. You just have to be willing to accept that and think of where you're placing your trust once that contingency needs to happen. Right. And so again, guys, if you take anything away from this, it's that you don't need to be practicing a religion. You don't need to even consider yourself a religious person or a believer, but having faith in something, keeping faith and holding yourself accountable at the same time, uh, is incredibly important and it will guide you. It will help you, um, in times of grief and crisis and in, in times of security and confidence. And this is what, you know, this is what I have, have recently practiced and, and been aware of, but I do want to finish this up by saying, you know, I've mentioned a few times that I was going through a difficult moment a little bit ago. Uh, and maybe I'll talk about it. Maybe I won't. I'll, I'll fill you guys in. But when I say John helped me, I'm not saying that John had this like crazy, like prayer that he told me that like enlightened me and changed my word. It's, it's, it's not like that. Sometimes just having the courage to reach out to someone that, you know, uh, anyone even and saying like, Hey, this is what I'm feeling right now. This is what I'm thinking right now. Can you just like listen to, to this and maybe let me know if I'm in the right direction? If, 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 am I being delusional? Am I off base? You don't even need to ask questions. Just allowing yourself to be heard to someone else is going to help you a lot. And it was John that when I asked about faith and hope, which is another topic that we'll be tackling in the future together, he kind of reinforced these things that I was already having a, a, an inkling of, but he helped me kind of fine tune it and put it into practice. And so uh, I don't want you guys to think that this is some light switch that you just like turn on and then everything's better. It's definitely a practice and it's definitely something that is difficult. But I'm telling you personally, from personal experience, it is worthwhile. So I'm not saying you have to go get your bar mitzvah. I'm not saying you have to do, uh, you know, confessions whenever you guys do confessions in, in Catholicism. I'm not saying that you gotta, <laughs> you know, give yourself up to a religion. But definitely take inventory, have faith, and practice this because it helped me so much. And uh, I'll let John kind of take it away here for the end. If there's one thing that you want the viewers to know about faith, what would it be? It's a will. It's an act of the will. You have to choose to trust or believe outside of yourself, whether that's in God, uh, 
multiple deities, whatever that is. Everybody, as long as you're human, you believe in something. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you you recognize that as a creator, uh, that's omniscient or whatever. Um, there is some sense of our imagination and our identity and, and our desire to seek fulfillment in our existence and lifting your intellect towards that transcendent, that ideal of what right looks like. That, that's your faith. Practice your faith hone that as a virtue we are you are you are given that that virtue utilize it and perfect it uh, every believe everybody believes in something a set of morals a moral code uh so, you know something so mm -hmm. reach for that and when you're going through a tough time ask for help and look for perspective it's like a child throw it's like a child when when a toddler is coming to a parent and uh angry about something right they're, they're wailing they're yelling they're whatever they're, they're throwing their tantrum and the parent has to wait until the emotions are lifted and then get down to the root problem offering perspective and methods of thought or attention or work towards a greater difference that that's what that parent does when you're going through a tough time not to demean anyone. Oftentimes, I, myself included, we act like kids thrown a tantrum. Yeah, absolutely. We don't like a certain you're reduced to your alcohol. most vulnerable, emotive state. Yeah. Yeah. So look for perspective. Be humble enough to bring somebody along and say, "Hey, I need a vector check." Right. And it'll pay off. So don't go through things on your own. You don't need to. And if you think you're on your own, call somebody. One hundred percent. So guys, I want to thank you for, for watching this. And uh, I want to thank you guys for commenting. Please join in the comment section. I'm sure uh, John will be in the comment section trolling around, finding, finding you guys to, uh, to preach the good word to. I'm kidding. <laughs> but if you do want to write to John, the comment section is a great way to do it. If you want to write to me, again, comment section is a great way to do it. And uh, if you have any questions or if you have any topics that you'd like to see us tackle, or if you have any specific questions for John, uh, please leave it in the comment section. And um, I'm sure he'd, he'd love to join in on one of these again. And John, I want to thank you personally for joining in and taking some time to uh, talk about these kind of deep topics. I mean, we're, we're talking about something that is, uh, you know, pretty heavy and we're doing it inside of 40 minutes. So I really do appreciate you, man. Too easy, man. Thanks for the opportunity. It's been fun. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Here's another episode of things that keep me up at night. I will catch you on the next one. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, check out our Patreon link in the description below. All right, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I will catch you on the next one.